What is going on, everyone? Uh, this is a very uh, unique video. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a sheet review of the 10th race at Oakland Park on Saturday. Very, very odd thing, but uh, DFS industry leader, uh, Matt Wiley uh, from Run Pure, he also has a, uh, I guess among other adventures, he has uh, uh, a, a horse racing syndicate where they have a couple of horses. And uh, I've been following them. And when I see that they're racing, I'll pick up the sheets just to kind of analyze and get a look at it. And I took a look at his horse the other day, Showdown King, and I basically thought he was 70% to win yesterday. Didn't work out that way. He got a, you know, pretty reasonable second. But he, but Matt mentioned to me that an advitement, or I don't know how you pronounce it, advitement, was going to be running at Oakland on Saturday. And I said, when the sheets came out, I would do a, you know, I would take a look at it. May as well have some fun and do a video. And again, for True DFS, this is complete transparency. So if I pick him to win, it's because I think he's going to win. If I pick him to lose, I think he's going to lose. But I think this is going to be a fun way to, you know, uh, join the industry a little bit and, and root and give somebody, yeah, give, do something a little different. Anyway, it's the 10th race at uh, Oaklawn. And just to give you an idea, it's a stage race, six furlongs, and seven horse field does not have the the morning line, which is good. It'll, uh, it'll bias us a little bit too much, but let's just take a look at it. So what we're looking at here is, is without getting into all the details of sheet theory, we're going to make it nice and easy and I'll get, I'll do go into a little bit of it, but the lower the number, the better. And you, you like to see good patterns and, and, and things like that. And we'll get into that maybe as we do other videos, but well, needless to say, I've been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, hence the name sheets, which is where my, Screening came from 100 years ago. Anyway, uh, the Donegal clan um, ran a 20 at late two, but in short order, it got through its 18 with a 12 and its last start in the mud. Obviously a very, very decent horse, very dynamic. Doesn't have to race another 12. I mean, it could go backwards here because it is on kind of short rest, but obviously it's done nothing wrong. And I, I, I'd make it very likely to run another 12. Maybe it'll bounce a little bit, but um, pretty strong horse. Uh, let's go, Mark. Uh, a little while to get moving here. Uh, these 19s early at two is are actually pretty good. Then just something weird happened. Then it got gelded. Condolences. Then it got kept moving forward and got a 13, which is good. Uh, should be good enough to win this race. Then it had an off race for a 16. Make this one a little bit weaker than the first one, but this certainly thing this certainly has possibilities of running a 13. Go Gold Joke uh, started off in the 21. First lay six, which is what the F means. It uh, ran a 14 minus, which is no, not bad. Probably need a little better for this this race. And then it had a little bit of an off race, not a big deal. 15. It's an improving dynamic three year old. It can certainly run a 12 uh, if it wants to. Then you have American Rascal. This is really strong because when you run a 14 this early at two, that's a really good indication. But then obviously something happened to it because it, it took a shot on the turf and came up totally empty. And then it knocked him out for another two months. And then it ran a 29. But then I guess they got their act together and then they, they broke through the 14 with a 13, a little off race. So this is obviously uh, an improving horse. This can run anything. This can run a 10, honestly. This 14 early at two is a really, really good indication that it's got a lot of upside. Um, so this one's obviously pretty strong as well. So pretty pretty competitive stakes race here. Then you have Time for Truth, who has basically one number. That basically is one number. It ran once and it ran an 11 minus, which is extremely strong. Um, it could go forward. It could go backward. It can do anything. But this is obviously a major contender here. Um, uh, time for truth. Now, poor Weidman. You know, Matt, uh, I got to say, I got to be honest. He's he's kind of in for it here. You know, we, we've gone over some of these other horses that are really running some dynamic lines, you know, to run 12s and 13s. One thing 
not the one thing. He does have that early 19, which is very, very good. Um, then it obviously got hurt, you know, had to. It's the only explanation for that. And then he gave him, I guess, five, six months off. Gave him a little prep race on the on going a route, I suppose. Didn't really do anything. Put him on Lasix for the first time, and it ran a new top, which is obviously pretty good. So he could go forward, and if he does, he'll be competitive. But he's this is going to be a tough spot for him, I have to say. I mean, the, I think that if I were going to put his odds this race, I would probably I, I wouldn't bet him if he weren't maybe 15 to one probably make him about mm, maybe 10 percent i guess maybe maybe a little less maybe eight nine percent it's just a tough field and that's the best i can i can say this not that he's a bad horse it's it's a two-year-old right it's a, we had a 19 earlier too that's that's a big deal and obviously he had some issues but this 15 minus on you know on the grass running lasix with, for the first time, that's a good sign. Certainly could go forward. I'd like to kind of see him take another shot on the grass, win, lose, or draw. I mean, this is a pretty decent number for a two-year-old on, on, on the grass. Um, but it's yeah, listen, it's a tough spot for him. Uh, then Valentine Candy, another pretty dynamic horse. It's run 17s, ran a 12, two back, then had this T, which is you know a lot of trouble. Uh, that means it's a big T. Hey, see what I did there? Um, big T means a lot of trouble. And so he could go forward as well. So it is definitely an open race. You definitely picked a tough spot. Um, I would probably make him, honestly, about 8% to win. Hey, but that's better than nothing. And I'll certainly be rooting. He does have a five pound weight advantage, at least over Valentine Candy. Valentine Candy is carrying an extra, you know, one point in weight, which is five pounds. So that's, that's good news, especially considering he's coming up two wins. Probably going to be a, probably going to be a favorite here, I'd imagine. But I don't know. That course, the one number 11, time for truth. Uh, it's going to be a tough race. I'll be rooting and uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.